chokes. These are very powerful and you need to be extremely careful when you're practicing these. Um, a true choke where your airway is being intentionally cut off, it should be considered an intentional and life-threatening situation. You need to respond with the appropriate amount of force. When you're practicing this, you have to use extreme caution. About 10 seconds of a full choke can be fatal. So uh, that five to seven second realm is what we're teaching to stop an aggressive attacker that might cause them to pass out or at least lose enough breath that they're not permanently injured, but they are incapacitated and you're able to get away. So just the calibration. The first choke I wanna show you is a bent over headlock choke. Now this might be used by like a bully on the playground or something and you can use, um, the appropriate amount of force for that to not uh, make them pass out. But if you are bent, oh, you wanna do this one? If you're bent over uh, and on the side, the big thing is that there's pressure on your windpipe. So always, always, always in a choke, you wanna turn your head to get that pressure off of the windpipe. That's better, right? Mm -hmm. You're still not free, but you're not gonna be losing breath. From here, we do something called chin foo, where you take your chin and you dig it into the side of the rib cage. It's mildly uncomfortable. It's enough to startle me because I'm not expecting it. From there, you're gonna move your outside and free hand up and push the attacker's face away. Now this is causing a big strain on me. My obliques are being stretched out. I'm losing pressure on my choking arm as he's pushing my head away. And he's much smaller than me. As he's pushing, he can bring, either do two, one of two things. If there's enough um, looseness on his hand, on his head, he can spin out and get away as he's pushing because I've lost a lot of that power. If not, and I still have a pretty strong thing, he can slide his back leg around behind me and that pushing now pushes back and causes me to go off balance and down. So one more time. He's in the headlock, big thing, get that pressure off your windpipe, turn your head, chin foo, dig your chin into the rib cage, push the face away from you. Either spin out or put that leg behind and push. It's gonna bring them down and give you some separation. Number two, if you're being choked while on the ground from behind, I'm choking from behind, very dangerous position. Same thing, you're gonna want to just spin around and then you wanna get your um, arm to push and create some distance. So using that forearm, that's pushing me away from him, which is loosening the pressure on his hand. Bring your knees up, this pro tip and choking, always have your feet flat on the ground when you're on the ground if possible. As you have the separation, bring your arm up and put it behind their neck and bring their head down. As you bring a leg up and get their neck in the crook of your foot, then bring that foot to the ground. So now I'm in a much vulnerable position. This can be something that you can either tickle or you can squeeze that leg towards your thigh, creating pressure on me. Obviously there's room that if you need to do tiger strikes or hits or uh, squeeze until submission, then you're able to get away. Okay, so one more time. You wanna spin around, get that pressure off your windpipe. Use your forearm, push some distance, get your knees up and inside. Bring that outside hand up and bring the attacker's head down. As their head goes down, your leg comes up, get their neck in the crook of your leg and bring that to the ground and squeeze towards your own body. That puts pressure to a submission on the attacker. Then you have lots of options on whether to continue with strikes, strong worded conversations, or call and get help and get out of there. Final one we're gonna do is called a block to choke submission. This is a combo. This is gonna have an overhead block that takes you all the way around, brings their arm straight up and pins their arm against their head, which then puts you in a choking position. So it's a uh, power turnaround. If an overhead strike is coming, you have that overhead block. As they hit, you're gonna start the turn, bring their hand all the way up and around. So it's a fast movement. Overhead strike comes in, block all the way up and around. Then with your other hand, you go up and in. So I've gone around the attacker's arm, around their neck, and I'm gonna grab my own wrist. So now his striking arm is incapacitated, his neck is in a vulnerable position, and I'm in a relatively safe position. His arms won't have a lot of striking power. I still can get hit, I still can get a little hurt, but perseverance, I've got him in a good position. I can either squeeze and add some pressure and hold him where he needs to be. I can use my legs and push him down over. I can hold him up here and have any number of tiger strikes or uh, side hits, face hits, whatever it is, but this is a much safer position. So one more time, the overhead strike comes in. I corresponding arm overhead blocks, swinging around till it's straight up, it's like a clock. Overhead strike comes in, block up and around. Immediately bring that other arm up. So I've got his arm and his head. Grab your own wrist and apply squeezing pressure. That's the overhead block to choke some Okay, for gr on the ground self-defense, this is an extremely dangerous position. You never want to voluntarily be on the ground, even if you feel like you have more striking power with your legs or whatever, it's just very dangerous. So the pro tip is if you happen to be on the ground, you always want to try to get to at least this position. Feet flat on the ground, knees bent. Never down, not on its side. Try whatever you're at to get those feet on the ground, knees bent, it gives you a lot of options. Like this? So we're gonna, not quite. So we're gonna show you two different um, scenarios for on the ground self-defense. The first is that you as the victim are being straddled. That means someone is over your body on top of you in front of your legs. Noah's got a great job where his feet are on the ground, knees are bent. You wanna put your chin to your chest to stop for a choke. 
Secondly, get those arms up to protect your face against strikes that are coming in. From here, when you have a window or you just go for it, you're gonna lean up and bear hug your attacker. So now, even though it feels weird and you're close, you've taken away those face strikes, you've taken away that choke option. From this bear hug, you're gonna arch your back, use those feet off the ground, that puts your attacker off balance. Choose a side and roll them while bear hugging. You've got that rolled down. Now, you've got a quick window to offer either a knee to the groin, a tiger strike to the face, a roll away and run to go get help. Let's show that one more time. From a straddle. Those knees are flat up, those feet are flat on the ground, knees are up, chin is down, protecting against the choke, arms are up to stop against strikes, lean forward and bear hug, you've taken away some of those options, a tight bear hug, lift and arch your back, that puts your attacker off balance, roll them over to either side, from here you've got a window to either knee to the groin, tiger strike to the face, roll and push away to get out, call for help. Second self-defense on the ground is going to be if someone is between your legs, so I'm going to be down here, my knees are open and spread and Noah is down here like this. Same thing, I want to tuck my chin, protect against the choke, arms up, protect against the strike. When I have a window, I want to reach up and grab either corresponding or cross underneath on the tricep. Again, that tricep is a great place to grab. The other interesting part of the body that has a lot of strength is your armpit. So from here, I want to either drag his arm so that his wrist is in my armpit, I'm going to squeeze, or if I can, I'm going to cross it over my body and squeeze it with that armpit, okay? My right armpit has him trapped here. From here, I'm going to create a little distance with my knee, or if he's smaller like this, I can just push and get his head facing. You've seen him move like this before. Bring that strong leg up and put it in his neck. You can bring that and roll it over to the ground. Still holding onto that arm tightly in your armpit. Underneath the tricep, I've got his neck inside my leg. Let's look at it one more time. This is a huge power turn uh, that's very dangerous, but be careful. Between my legs, very vulnerable position. Strikes are coming in. My chin is down to protect. I'm going to reach up and grab underneath that tricep, pull it down into either my corresponding armpit or across my body into an armpit. I'm going to use and push his face inside, bring up a strong leg, bring it down and around. I'm going to squeeze up in here. From here, I can have control of his arm. I can do lats. I can do throat strikes, tiger claws, whatever it is, or just roll away and get out.